When you run an independent samples t-test in SPSS, you get two tables of output. The first table provides descriptive statistics for each group of scores. Here we can see that there were 18 members of the male group and 17 members of the female group. Although the two group means are very similar, there is more variability in the male group as indicated by the larger standard deviation. The second table actually contains two separate tests. The first test is Levine's test for equality of variances. The null hypothesis for this test is that the two group variances are homogeneous, or the same. In other words, it's a test of the homogeneity of variances assumption. When Levine's test is significant, as it is here with a significance level of less than 0.05, the homogeneity of variances assumption has been violated. Consequently, we need to report and interpret the t-test for equal variances not assumed, which is also called Welsh's t-test. The null hypothesis for this test is that the two group means are the same. As the test is not significant, because the significance level is greater than 0.05, we are unable to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the two group means do not differ by more than would be expected by chance. To report this finding, we might say something like, Welsh's t-test was used to compare the mean IQ scores of the male and female students. The mean difference of 0.79 was not statistically significant. The 95% confidence interval simply tells us that the true population mean difference is probably somewhere between negative 5.03 and 6.6. .6. Also note that if your research hypothesis was directional, you can divide the p-value in half and report the test as one-tailed. Don't forget that when writing up a piece of research like this, you may also be required to report the results of your assumption testing and an effect size.